Welcome to Battlefield Report's daily analysis on the war in Ukraine. On June 26, Russian forces launched a significant missile attack against Kiev's Shevchenkivsky neighborhood, in time for the G7 leaders summit. Similar to the earlier bombings on April 29 during UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres' visit to Kiev, this is the first significant attack on the Ukrainian capital since late April and is probably a direct reaction to Western leaders contemplating aid to Ukraine at the current G7 conference. Russian forces reportedly used X-101 missiles fired from 295 and 2160 bombers over the Caspian Sea to strike infrastructure in the Shevchenkivsky area. Ukrainian government officials said the Russian operation was an effort to show off their capabilities. The Artem State Joint Stock Holding Company, a producer of air-to-air -air missiles, automated air-guided missile training and maintenance systems, anti-tank guided missiles, and aviation equipment, was the target of the strikes, according to open-source Twitter account GeoConfirmed. GeoConfirmed pointed out that Russian forces probably fired the missiles from a distance as great as possible, interfering with GPS and radar correlation causing the strike to hit civilian infrastructure, and further speculated that some of the missiles might have been fired from Russian-occupied southern Ukraine. Russian forces probably chose to attack the Artem plant in retaliation for Western military assistance to Ukraine during the G7 conference, and they also caused more collateral damage to residential infrastructure. By manipulating Russian law, the Kremlin has continued to back operations in Ukraine through covert mobilization rather than full mobilization. On June 28, the Russian State Duma announced plans to review a change to the law governing military service that would enable military officials to hire young men right away after they come of age or graduate from high school, eliminating the requirement that they serve their country as conscripts. On June 25, Kirill Obudinov, the head of the Ukrainian main intelligence directorate GUR, claimed that the Kremlin was engaging in covert mobilization and that because of this, Ukrainian forces could not wait for the Russians to exhaust their offensive capabilities before launching counteroffensives. Probably an overall charge of Russian forces in Ukraine is Colonel General Gennady Zidko, who serves as the director of Russia's military political directorate at the moment. While Zitko's nameplate was noticeably blurred out by the Russian Ministry of Defense and his position has not been officially confirmed, unlike the commanders of Russia's two force groupings in Ukraine, Zitko sat next to and conferred with Sergei Shoigu during an inspection of Russian ground forces in Ukraine. Conflict intelligence team had earlier reported on May 26 that Zitko had replaced commander of the Southern Military District Alexander Dvornikov as the country's top commander. This transition was most likely confirmed by news of Dvornikov's dismissal on June 21 and Zidko's prominent position during Shoigu's visit on June 26. It has been Battlefield Reports on the War in Ukraine. If you like the content don't forget to subscribe for more daily analyses and footage.